This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Today we're going to make this little crochet cap, which is warm and has a fun little flower frill on it. It also has a very interesting double width English rib stitch here, a single width English rib stitch at the crown, and makes a nice rounded top. So let's get started with the little flower embellishment. For this project I'm using sport weight yarn and I am e-wrapping on my Brother Bulky machine over 27 stitches. Oops. Then I'm going to hang a comb and two weights, one on each end. I'll set my row counter to 000. zero, zero. and I will knit two rows. And just stop and make sure that my comb drops. Now I'm setting my carriage to the H setting, which slips any held needles. And I'm bringing out the fourth needle and then the fifth needle. So see there's three back, one up, four back, one up. Doing the fifth needle on across and I end up with three back. Now I'm going to knit four rows and it's going to just lay the yarn over these held needles. It's going to make a big deep tuck. Then I'll push them back halfway so the machine will knit them and I'll knit one row. Then I'll bring out the same needles again and knit four rows. push them back and knit one row. Now I'll pr repeat that same procedure bringing out those same needles one more time, knit four rows, push them part way back, knit one row, then I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to sew the stitches off. That is, I'm going to take a needle, thread the yarn, and put it through each stitch across the work. I took off the comb and weights, and I'm just sewing these stitches off now. Now here's what this looks like, and this is really simple. You can just yank on this yarn and pull it into a circle, then you're going to put a seam right here and sew it on your hat. That's really all there is to that. You can put either side up. Here's how the other side looks. But I decided after thinking it over a while that I liked the knit side up. And you just let this cast on edge roll in. So there's your little flower embellishment. I'm going to set my machine up for ribbing now, and I've brought the ribbing bed up and put the ribber arm on. I'm setting up for knit two and skip one on the main bed using this special pusher. And I'm starting over on needle number 31 on the right and continuing on over to needle number 31 on the left. The needles for the main part of the pattern are going to be ending on the main bed on both sides. Now for the ribber, I'm going to zoom in and show you what needles to bring up. Before you even pick out needles on your ribber, be sure and rack to three and a half, or to the center, but in half pitch for whatever machine you're using. Now, with my machine, the first needle on the ribber is going to be the needle in between the two main bed needles. Now I'm using that same tool to push up two needles and leave one needle down. And I will go on across my bed, ending on the left hand side with one needle in between the two needles on the left hand side. So I was on needle number 31 on my ribber on the left and it ended up in between needles number 30 and 31 on the left on the main bed. I am set on the tightest tension and I'm threading the machine 
and getting ready to do my zigzag row. One row from right to left. Now, do you see how it zigzags between the needles? That's what we need to have. I am now installing a comb. See it poking up in there? And I'm going to put three of the large ribber weights, those are the one pound ones, on the comb. I've set my carriages for the circular selvage and tension one on both carriages and I'm knitting my three rows of circular knitting. First row knits on the main bed, second row on the river, third row on the main bed. Then I cancel circular. I'm changing up to my garment tension. For this project my tension is three. Before commencing the pattern be sure and transfer that end stitch on the far left up to the main bed. You want the main bed needles to be the ones on the end of the work. I set my row counter to zero, zero, zero. Now I need to rack two clicks to the left to get positioned for industrial rib. For the industrial rib, my needles on the main bed and ribber are going to come close but not hit. So there's two needles in between these two needles here on the main bed and this needle and this needle are only a half step apart. I love industrial rib because it gives you a very stretchy bouncy ribbing. My main bed and ribber carriages are both set for plain knitting and I knit six rows. This is ordinary knit two purl two ribbing. I wanted to tuck in one direction only, so I bring up this PR lever and slide over this RP slider over to P. I'm going to knit 48 rows. When I've got the 48 rows done, I'm going to be on row counter number 54. Now as I do this first row, it's a tuck row. Look what it did. It just laid the yarn in these ribber needles and did not knit them. When I knit back, all the needles will knit. Now I'm going to do this for my 48 rows total and come back on camera and show you the next step. For this next step, I'm tightening my tension all the way down to zero in two clicks. Then I'm taking a transfer tool and I'm rearranging my stitches leaving the two end needles alone on the main bed. I'm going to take every other group of two needles and move the left stitch onto the right needle all the way across. Now I didn't change the ribber settings, all I changed was the tension. I will do that all the way across on the main bed on the ribber. Guess what? I'm going to take the left stitch in each group of two and transfer it to the right needle in each group of two. All the way across the machine. Whenever I move a whole lot of needles, I like to just stop and look at my needles and make sure that I moved the right needles and didn't make any mistakes. I want to make sure I don't have any needles out in working position that are empty. The empties need to all be back. Now I'm doing single English rib knit one purl one. I've gone from knit two purl two to knit one purl one. And I'm going to knit 20 rows. The hat is finished by sewing off the stitches and the easiest way to do that is to cut a long tail of the yarn for sewing up later tie on some waist yarn to the upper tension yarn and then I'll just bring this yarn in between the needle beds. Sometimes the latch tool helps. I pull it down and down and down until the waist yarn is in the feeder and all of the garment yarn is below the machine. And then I'm going to knit about eight rows with waist yarn. I've spread the hat in my lap and I'm going to gather up the stitches by sewing them onto the thread that came from the end. So I cut it away from the 
red waste yarn. And what I'm going to do is spread this out and pick up one side of each loop with my needle. Now I'm not bothering with the purled stitches yet. I'll get them next. I can stack a lot of stitches on my needle and then draw through and keep on going. Now notice that I did this in one direction. As I face the knitting, I went from left to right. This would be from your right to your left. I am going to turn the knitting over now and I'm going to go the same way. Now that seems illogical to run this yarn across here, but this makes it draw up better. This will gather the knit stitches in a circle and it'll gather the purl stitches in a circle inside the knit stitches. Okay, next job is just to pull that waste yarn off. With the waste yarn off, I can just draw this yarn into a circle and it makes a beautiful smooth crown on the top of the hat. With my stitches sewn off, I wanted to show you how the hat looks. On the inside, it just looks like two by two ribbing. On the outside, there's this very interesting double English rib and then it comes up to the crown of the hat and turns into the single English rib. You're going to want to pull the sewn off stitches really tight and sew this little center closed, but you get a really nice smooth crown to the hat. And then just sew the seam down the side and add your embellishment. 